Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. It is because of the Lord's mercy we are not consumed. Great is his faithfulness. This is the virtual Bible class of the Friendship Baptist Church of Delaware. And we want to say thank you for tuning in to our Bible class tonight. Listen, do us a favor tonight. Tag a co-worker, tag a friend, tag a family member, and tell them it's now time for word. It's word time here at the Friendship Baptist Church. Uh, we want to say thank you for joining us tonight. We're thankful to God because God has been better to us than we have been to ourselves. Uh, if you have not had the opportunity, we want you to go back and rewatch our live from this past Sunday. Sure, the Lord was with us in our morning worship experience. Uh, go back and watch it. Amen. Go watch and replay. You will be blessed. Uh, we understand and we know. Amen. God has brought us to this, the end of the month of February. So much has taken place this month and we want to say thank God. Amen. We were able to celebrate our family and friends day. We celebrated our heritage month. We celebrated American Heart Disease Month. We thank God uh, that God blessed us. Amen. To remember our past, to celebrate our present. Amen. And look forward to our future. We have some great things that are in store for the month of March. We know so much is going on and we don't want to bombard you with a whole lot of announcement, but we want you to keep your ears and your eyes open, amen, to what friendship is doing, amen, uh, for the coming months. Uh, you Once again, you're invited to join us every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. for our in-person worship. This Sunday is our Holy Communion Sunday. Uh, and we will be partaking of the Lord's table. Amen. So we want you to come and worship with us via in the sanctuary or uh, on our YouTube channel at 10 a.m. Listen, uh, we want to give thanks to God tonight, to our Deacon Warren Henderson, Deacon Owens, our Dr. Cheryl, our ministers, uh, saints, friends, trustees, everyone that makes up the great church called Friendship. We are continuing to pray for our sick and shut in. We continue to pray especially for our uh, those who have been touched with sickness, those who have been uh, dealing with pain, and those who have been dealing with whatever ailments they have been going on. We want you to know that we're praying for you, that we want you to know that we love you. And may the blessings of the Lord be upon you is our prayer. Let's pray tonight. Father, I thank you for this time that you have allowed us to come and to share in your word tonight. I pray, Father, that someone tonight that is watching the live or watching the replay, I pray, Father, that their lives will never be the same. I pray, Father, that whatever they're going through, that through this word tonight, that their life and the things concerning their life will become better by the word that you speak tonight. And I thank you, Father, for being the willing vessel that you have chosen, chosen for this season to deliver this word. Bless us and keep us in Jesus' name. We're thankful to God tonight. Once again, for all of you that have joined us, we're going right back to where we have been. We're going right to Haggai chapter 2, and we're going to Haggai chapter 2, verses 20 and through 2020. We're going, I'm sorry, Haggai chapter 2, verses 20 through 23, out of the King James. And again, the word of the Lord came unto Haggai in the fourth and 20th day of the month, saying, speak to Zerubbabel, the governor of Judah. I will shake the heavens and the earth, and I will overthrow the throne of kingdom, and I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the heathen. And I will overthrow the chariots and those that ride in them and the horses and their riders shall come down every one, but every one by the sword of his brother. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, I will take thee, O Zerubbabel, my servant, saith the Lord, and will make thee a signet. For I have chosen thee, 
saith the Lord of hosts. Here reads the word of God. A local Oregon newspaper read, said the title of the first Christian church programming had their program and it said, Our God resigns. When actuality, it should have been titled, Our God reigns. Because of this typo, what a difference a letter makes. But more, but, but maybe if this typo is more true in our own experience than we can uh, care to admit. Many Christians live as if their God resigned, not as if he reigns as the sovereign of our God. It has been said that 70% of pastors constantly fight depression. That if we're not uh, aren't careful, we can easily develop the perception because as you look around, it seems as if the enemy is winning. If we be honest and tell the truth, it seems like uh, certain areas of our lives, certain things that we're battling, certain things that we're going through, it may seem like the enemy is winning. But in spite of all of the Christian influence and the Christian resort uh, resolutions or uh, resources available in our country and our world, evil has escaped to an unimaginable proportion. The gospel, uh, brothers and sisters, has been changed from how a person can be saved from God's judgment to how we can use God for personal fulfillment. Uh, we have to be careful because we in a generation now where the Bible speaks about that in the last days, perilous times will come when men will become lovers of themselves. They will have an itchy ear, in other words, uh, indicating that they will believe a lie before they believe the truth. They will, they will, they will leave, they will, uh, they will love God because what he does, but we have to move from having God just as a personal fulfillment. We want to use God to, to oh God, I want you to, I'm going to pray that you pay my bill. I'm going to pray that I get the money, that you're going to give me the money that's going to fall out the sky. I can pay my car note. I can pay my bill. I can do this and that. And then when God blesses you with it, you run around until you need him again. God is not a genie. You you can't rub him and expect things to happen. But when you consider, when we consider the cause of the world's mission, it also can be discouraging. Our lesson tonight finds us by a man by the name of Zerubbabel, who found himself in that same or in this same sort of discouraging situation. Zerubbabel was the grandson, the last ruler of, Ju of Judah before Nebuchadnezzar destroyed Jerusalem and conquered the land. Most of the population had been carried off from Babylon, Babylon and even now only a small remnant of about 50,000 had returned under Cyrus' permission. They were still under the Persian rule and surrounded by hostile neighbors who opposed the Jewish resettlement. The Jews who returned seemed more concerned with their own comfort and prosperity than what the things of God. 
Uh, just because we read it and we get an understanding that it happened some years and years and years ago, we still have to understand there are still some people who are not concerned about the things of God, but they're concerned about what is going on in their own life. You have some people that feel like God did not give them what they have. Uh, they will tell you that it's, I, it was because of my own blood, sweat, and tears that I have what I have. And that is a dangerous mindset that you that you take on that if you don't think that if God did not give you the with all the, the know or the knowledge of knowing how to do what you do, don't you ever get so engulfed into your own thing that we forget about God. Although, here it is, although there was a good response to Hagar's call to rebuild the temple, many of the Jews were religiously outwardly, but, they, but their hearts were not right before God. Tag verse 14 of chapter 2. Um, they, 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 many of the Jews were religious outward. They had a they had what we call a form. They looked, they looked the part. They looked the stature. They, they fit, they fit the mold, but their hearts were not right before God. The walls of the the walls of Jerusalem were still torn down, leaving the city vulnerable. Somehow Zerubbabel was supposed to govern in this bleak situation. How can Zerubbabel supposed to govern these? How are you supposed to do what you're supposed to do when the situation you're not felt like you're felt you're dealing with a bleak and dark situation? Uh, but it's December the 18th, 520 BC, the day that Haggai had a message from, from God for the people. He called them not only to continue the work on the temple, but to do it from hearts that were holy before God. In other words, he told them not only to continue the work on the temple, but do it with a heart. that were holy before God. And that's what we got to understand, ladies and gentlemen, when we do the things of God, when we're attending to God's work, we must have it also, it has to be in our minds, that it's in our minds. It, when it moves from our minds, it moves to our lips. When we move from our lips, it moves to our heart, that it moves from our heart to our hand, that we do it with the heart of God that we make sure that we do what we do. But he promises, here's the thing, to bless them from that day on. On that same day, God gave Haggai a message directly to Zerubbabel. Here we are. That when you look at this, the first and third message, messages in Haggai are parallel. And the second and the fourth are parallel. The first and third messages were, were, were rebuke or exhortation. The second and fourth messages are of encouragement to Zerubbabel and to all of, uh, all of God's servants who may have, may have been discouraged. God has sent this word. Because the sovereignty of because the sovereign Lord will prevail in his imminent in his eternal plan. His servant should be encouraged to trust him and to do his will. Let me say that again. Because the sovereign Lord will prevail in his eternal plan, we as his servant should encourage or should be encouraged to trust him and to do his will. I want to tell you tonight, put it in the comments, say, I will trust him and do his will. Point one tonight, point one, the sovereignty of the Lord will prevail in his eternal plan. 
This is the, 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 this is the explicit message of the text. The application being encouraged to trust God and do his will is by way of implication. That there are five truths drive home this overall message that the sovereign Lord will prevail. And I want to say this tonight. Five things. Hey, God has a different plan for history. What do you mean? He says, he repeats the first personal pronoun, I. I am going to shake the heavens and the earth. I will overthrow the thrones and kingdoms. I will overthrow the chariots and their rise. I will take you the rule I will make you a signet ring. I have chosen you, declares the Lord of hosts. That we get the impression that God has an idea about how or what he is going to do. History isn't just careering out of a control with God's desperation, trying to grab the reign. So the sovereign God controls all the events of history and for his purpose. As he declares through Isaiah, the Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, surely just as I have intended, so it has happened. And just as I plan it, so it will stand. Isaiah 14 and 24. Now remember this. Remember this and be assured. Recall it to your mind. Your transgressor. Remember the former things long past. For I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is no one like me declaring the declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient time things which have not been done saying my purpose will be established and I will accomplish all of my good pleasures calling a bird of prey from the east the man of my purpose from a far country Truly, I have spoken. Truly, I will bring it to pass. I have planned it. Surely, I will do it. Isaiah 46, verses 8 through 11. As you know, there are many of us Christians today who effectively deny God's sovereignty over man's will. There are many Christians Today, who effectively deny God's sovereignty over man's will. That because here it is, scripture affirms that people will choose for which they are responsible. But it also affirms that over and above the choices that we make is the sovereignty purpose of God. The Haggai. Habakkuk 2 and 14, his ultimate purpose is that he will be glorified for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. We have the choice of either cooperating with that purpose in which cause we will be blessed or fighting against it, in which case we will not in any way thrive it that we can or throw it out and he will be glorified in our judgment. Not only does the sovereignty Lord will, the sovereignty Lord will prevail in his eternal plan. God almighty is God almighty. God is mighty to accomplish his plans. God is mighty to accomplish his plans. This text, this evening, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, does not contain any conditions. God does not say, I hope to be able to shake the heavens and the earth, but it depends on how men, how we respond with their, our free will. We can look and take as a rule if you're willing and make me a signet ring, that he says, I will take you Zerubbabel 
if you are willing and I'll and make me a signet ring. God is quite absolute in declaring what he will do in the future to accomplish his plans. Zerubbabel easily could have said, but Lord, we Jews have returned to the land are few in number. He could have said, but he said, we have, he could have said, we have no king, no army, no weapons to use in our defense. We're surrounded by hostile and powerful nations and we're subject to the most powerful kingdom on the face of the earth. How can we prevail? But clearly God ability, God's ability to accomplish his sovereignty purpose does not depend on the pun resources of his people, but on the but on his power and might. The Bible is loaded with stories of how God delights in overthrowing power, powerful kingdom that dare to exalt themselves over his weak, vulnerable, chosen people. He is the God who brought the plagues on the mighty Egyptians and drowned their king and his army in the Red Sea. He topped over the walls of Jerusalem. He used uh, Josiah, or Joshua and Caleb, who trusted him to conquer the fearsome giant in the land. He he delivered, uh, rather he fell, uh, he, he, he took Goliath and put the Philistines to fight, uh, flight at the hand of a teenage shepherd named David. He delivered Hezekiah in Jerusalem from the seeds by sending an angel to kill 185,000 soldiers in one night. He repeatedly declares his in his word as Jeremiah puts it, O Lord God, before, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and your outstretched arm. Nothing is too difficult for you. I want to tell you tonight, there is nothing that God has placed in your heart, gone, whatever God has commissioned you to do, whatever God has told us to do, there is nothing too difficult for God to handle. But the question tonight is, what is your problem? We are complaining because we feel like we can't do it because it seemed like you take one foot and something else happened. Oh, but I want to tell you tonight, there is nothing too difficult for God. Not only does, not only does the sovereignty Lord will prevail in his eternal plan, not only God is mighty to accomplish his plan, but tonight, number three, God's plan is to is carried out in accordance with his choice. God plainly states the reason that he will make Zerubbabel like his signet ring, for I have chosen you, declares the Lord of hosts in verse 23 of chapter two of Haggai. Hey Again, note that God does not say, I will make you like my signet ring. Because I am, I because I foresee that you have that you will choose me. There are many Christians who would force the meaning into this text, but I am content to let the let you know God accomplishes his, his sovereignty plan through his choices. As John Calvin observes, for God does not hear ascribes excellence nor mere to Zerubbabel. But he, but he takes this as God, as his own election. Uh, 
Calvin, John Calvin goes on to say that if we ask why God had so much for Zerubbabel, it can be found in nothing else but in the goodness of God alone. That in other words, God's election is not conditional on anything that he sees or foresees in fallen men, but only on his grace and good pleasure. God's sovereignty, eternal choices lie beyond the temporal choices of men. Temporal meaning seasonal for a moment, a short period of time. But God's sovereignty, eternal meaning, not just today, not tomorrow, not over 2000. It, it goes from here until forever. But at the same time, men are responsible for the choices that they make. We as men and women, we are responsible for the choices that we make. It is the same in the matter of salvation. People must choose to trust God or trust in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Indeed, God commands them to repent and believe on the gospel. Mark chapter 1 verse 15. But when people make their choice, it does not stem from anything in them. It does not happen because they consider all of the alternatives. And with uh, their, uh, bri their brilliant minds, they saw that it would make the most sense. The nature, the natural mind is blinded by Satan and by sin so that it cannot see the light of the gospel of, of the glory of Christ. The nature, the natural mind cannot understand or accept the things of the spirit of God because they are spiritually discerned. So when anyone chooses to trust Christ, it is only because God has sovereignty chose them and because Jesus will to reveal the Father to them. Our last statement tonight. Salvation is of the Lord. Let me say that again. The natural mind is blinded by Satan and by sin so that it cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. The natural mind cannot understand or accept the things of the spirit of God because they, they are spiritually discern 1 Corinthians 2 and 14. So when anyone chooses to trust to trust Christ it's only because God has sovereignly chosen them and because Jesus will to reveal the Father to them. Luke 10 and 22. Salvation is of the Lord. Jonah 2 and 9. That I want to say to us tonight, as we close out this book of Haggai chapter 1 and verse chapter 2, tonight we must take into consideration that we have been chosen 
by God. Look at verse 23. In that day, said the Lord of all, I will take thee, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son, and I will make thee a signet. A signet says, because for I have chosen thee. Say of the Lord of hosts. We got to understand something tonight. The only way that we know we are chosen, that God has chosen us, is because God reigned. He did not resign. 